All right. Hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren, coronavirus special. We are talking about what's going on with the courts, okay? Everybody is going crazy. Um, it's near panic. People are going into their Trader Joe's, cleaning the shelves, Walmarts, cleaning the shelves. Everything's going on. Trump's on uh, TV talking about the stock market and bailing out the airline industry all of a sudden. So there's a lot of talk of what's going on. This coronavirus is also affecting the court system, okay? Maybe it's not on TV. Most people aren't talking about it, but it's affecting the court system now. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to show you just a press release from Arizona. I am licensed in California and Arizona. This is a press release from Arizona. It tells you a little bit about what you can expect in your state. So let's take a little bit of look. Let's take a look here, okay? This was issued March 13th. This is Arizona court statement on COVID-19, coronavirus, a.k.a. COVID-19, okay? Um, the Arizona Administrative Office of the Courts provides the following information in response to the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus disease. Courts around Arizona are being instructed to take steps to reduce the number of people entering courthouses. So one thing you may see is more stringent um, requirements on who they let in and who they let out. Think about it. When you have a court case, you have hearings. I mean, usually when I go to court, the, um, the courthouse is filled with lawyers and litigants. There's usually people waiting out in the halls. There's bailiffs, there's court staff, there's judges. There's, it's a lot of people. You may start seeing courts in your neighborhood, your state courts, your federal courts, being limited on who can enter, okay? They may even start testing people for coronavirus at, this, at the courthouse steps. I have no idea. But here it is. Courts around Arizona are being instructed to take steps to reduce the number of people entering the courthouses to slow the potential spread of COVID-19 or other communicable diseases. I don't know. Which other ones do you think they're talking about, Frontline Lisi? Don't even ask her she doesn't she doesn't know i don't know we're not doctors we're i'm a lawyer here so signs are recommended to instruct individuals not to enter courthouses if they feel ill now that's just kind of weird because a lot of people feel ill they don't feel good especially when they're going to court they're nervous they have anxiety their stomach is swelling up they may start sweating so it's going to be weird um, because a lot of these things are just normal human responses to um, highly stressful situations so we're going to see how this plays out um, i think there's going to be a lot of crazy things happening to be honest with you so not to enter the courthouse if they feel ill or have a reason to believe they have been exposed to someone who is ill. Individuals have health concerns with entering a courthouse for a scheduled event should contact the court directly for further information and direction. Now, this is an important thing, okay? Now, when you're dealing with courts, every judge has their own courthouse. The, the judges are allowed to handle and run their courthouse like their own business, essentially. They can set rules and guidelines of what they're comfortable with, what they don't want, what they do want. So before you go to court, you might want to call your clerk. Sometimes you have to email the clerk. You have to check their local rules on their website and decide what you decide how to best contact them. You have to be careful about not contacting a uh, the judge without the other party know, knowing about it. That's what we call ex parte communications. Those are frowned on if you're lawyers representing people. But you may want to check with your court before you show up because they may say, you know what, we're not doing any more court appearances. There's, it's getting too big in our state. There are too many coronavirus cases. We're not doing that anymore. You must set a uh, court call. Okay, there's a company called Court Call. I think it's about, what is it, 75 80 Oh, okay. So th their prices may be going down too, but I, I have always remembered that as about like $70, $75, $80. Anyway, check with court calls. So you want to communicate with your court, check your local rules, check the website of the judge, see if they have any new rules before you spend all your time, for example, driving through San Francisco or driving through San Diego traffic or driving through uh, Maricopa County traffic or LA traffic, check because they may have changed the rules. You can end up going down there for nothing and you don't want to do that, okay? Now, let's move on here. Examples, several courts have already taken to, taken to reduce non-essential use of courthouses including postponing school tours. No more school tours of the court, programs, clinics, and classes. There may be law libraries in your local courthouses. Law libraries and self-help centers will remain open, but check, this is just Arizona. Could be different in your area. 
Um, courts are applying enhanced cleaning procedures. They're going to ramp up their cleaning. This is why you see everybody buying more toilet paper, more hand sanitizers. Expect that to continue. Um, and social distancing. This is a new term. I'm going to highlight this. This is something we're just now seeing in Frontline. What are they recommending? How far? How many feet away? Six feet. Six feet away from other people, which so if is. I go to the grocery store, can I say I can't reach you because I can't pay you because you're six feet away from me? Is that going to be a little Well, yeah, no. So, I mean, you know, these are guidelines of social distancing. So maybe, for an example, and I'm not trying to be funny, but maybe approach the bench. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Maybe the judge just says, no, you stay where you're at. You stay right where you're at. Uh, and I'm not trying to be funny again. They, I think these are real things. The court clerk may, so usually uh, many times um, when you go into a court, the clerk will say, you know, counsel, come up here, please sign in. That may be reduced. Um, yes, have your business cards yeah, handy have with the virus on it, so they won't probably not going to do that. Right. So, so we don't know. These are just things to think about. Social distancing, six feet to minimize the spread of the disease. Other services and programs have been moved to telephonic. I just talked about this or web-based interactions. Sometimes you can set up a meeting with a judge, or if you're in federal court like us, we do a lot of federal copyright cases. You could be dealing with a magistrate judge on a phone call. Members of the, ch of the public should check with off-site legal clinics or program providers to see if they are moving to telephonic formats instead of holding in-person events. This is very important. Like I said, when you get up at you know 6 o'clock to get into L.A. court by 8.30 or 9 o'clock, you know, because they're going to shut the doors on you, let's say, if you're not there, you want to know if they're even going to be there, if they're even going to let you in, or if they've maybe just recently changed their policy. So check your websites, check with your court clerks, a little bit more here, down to um, courts are encouraged to conduct various case events telephonically when feasible, uh, which makes it tough when you talk about a jury trial, because in a criminal case, you have a right to a speedy trial. Now, this could be very interesting. I don't do criminal defense, but you have a right to a speedy trial, jury of your peers. What happens if they don't want to assemble juries anymore? And you say, well, I want a speedy trial. Maybe they have to look at dismissing cases. I don't know. Ask a criminal defense attorney. But they're looking to move things telephonically. This is very important. Each court's capacity for telephonic appearances varies. As a result, attorneys and self-represented uh, represented litigants, what we call improper or pro se, should contact the judge's office assigned to their case to verify the ability to hold a telephonic hearing, okay? Attorneys are encouraged to participate in telephonic hearings. And as you can see, I'm working from home today because there's just a lot of chaos right now and madness in the courts. Um, we're just ferreting this out. We have our own issues as lawyers that we're dealing with. Uh, but we're encouraged to participate in telephonic hearings when possible. Individual judges, as I mentioned, will determine which hearings require in-person appearance, like maybe a motion for summary judgment can still be f very difficult over the phone. They may still require you to come in for that. Maybe a motion to dismiss can be very difficult over the phone and which can proceed by phone. Jury service continues as health officials have advised there is no need to cancel jury service at this time. This could change. We are living minute to minute here, if you're watching the news. Minute to minute, things are changing in China, in Italy, and France is closing their borders. Canada's closing their borders. Um, so this is, this, is a, this is live in real time, folks, what's going on here. But it continues here in Arizona. Health officials have advised there is no need to cancel jury service at this time. But I did see on the news, the news, that there was, they didn't want you to get together with more than 10 people, so I'm not quite sure how that meets with the federal guidelines. Frontline? I have jury due down April 1st. So Lisa, my wife, Frontline Lisa, the amazing, incomparable, the one-of-a-kind, superstar, unbelievable, I, I gotta stop. She's got jury duty coming up, so she's gonna need to check um, with, with and see, are they actually gonna hold jury duty? When is that? April 1st, but they say to call in the night before, so I will do okay. that. So, before. Okay, so she'll call in the night before to see if that's still going. But as you can see here, jury service continues. No need to cancel, as they were saying. However, jury commissioners and judges are prepared to address situations where jurors appear ill if they report feeling ill. Now, like I said, some people just get ill. They see that jury card and they go, oh, God, I've got a business to run. I just, I can't do this. 
So this will be interesting to see, but if you have a cough, a fever, um, diarrhea, everybody's buying toilet paper, if you have these problems, uh, maybe they will just ask you not to come in. I don't know. As I tell people, uh, jury duty is a civic duty. I always say do it because you never know when you, you may be in the case of the century, get a chance to write a book, but also it's your, jur it's your civic duty as a citizen of the United States, okay? And report your exposure to someone if you're feeling like you might be ill. So we're getting down to the bottom here. Courts are instructed to follow recommended practices for cleaning and social distancing in areas where jurors gather. That's why I said, how do you get um, a room full of 50 potential jurors and have them each six feet away? You would have to have like a big um, conference room of some sort. And, and there, Front line. Because I've been there. I've been in jury duty before. There are tons of people. You're in a room like elbow to elbow, like a like a DMV place. So they they can't do it if this is what they're trying to recommend. So this is going to be difficult. Like I said, this is all new stuff, um, such as waiting areas, jury boxes. How do you can't the jury boxes are not six feet apart. No, they are about two two inches apart. And the deliberation areas, so where you go and actually decide if somebody's innocent or guilty. So. Um, examples include hand washing signs, hand sanitizers, and wipes. We see those flying off the shelf. Single use paper and writing tools. Um, I'm not sure what that means to you. Single use paper. That, um, jurors get, um, so you're not passing it around or something? Okay. Um, movement in smaller groups, single use badges, um, wiping down surfaces and alternatives to passing exhibits to the jury. So I'm not sure how, when you pass exhibits and you say, here, yeah. here's exhibit 12, right. please pass it on. So trying to find ways to limit that. So I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Maybe they will make those accessible via the web and you can look at, look, look at it through your own device. I don't know how they're going to handle this. Uh, continuing, Arizona is currently one of the least affected states in the nation for coronavirus. Perhaps the heat kills it. I don't know, the dry heat. However, if the situation worsens, the chief justice of the Arizona courts will authorize the county presiding judges to take the necessary steps to continue operating courts in a safe manner. And again, I think you're going to see this in California. I think you're going to see this in a lot of different places. My law clerk just chimed in. He agrees. He said, I completely agree. So consistent with public health recommendation, courts are instructed to increase the cleaning frequency. Again, there's a heavy emphasis on cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Public areas such as elevators, restrooms, courtrooms, and jury assembly and deliberation rooms using an antiviral product identified by the Center for Disease Control, that's the CDC, um, to combat COVID-19, a.k.a. coronavirus, okay? Members of the public and judicial branch staff are encouraged to follow the best practices for minimizing risk, including regular hand washing, everybody's washing their hands, maintaining social distancing, again, the six foot is what I've heard, limiting contact with symptomatic individuals that can be hard to tell, but try to minimize your contract, uh, contacts, increasing sterilization of frequently touched surfaces, your jury tables, your, your, your uh, deliberation rooms, um, and covering your cough, especially when you cough or, or sneeze, just cover. And cover with the tissue, not your hands. Because in your hands, go here, you touch somebody, you touch a hand, you touch your face, and you have problems. Court users and the public should maintain contact with the individual courts, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, speaking of coughing. Where possible, individuals with court cases or who are seeking to file documents with the courts are encouraged to file electronically. That's what we do in federal courts. More state courts are doing that. And use external filing depository boxes or to mail their filings. We do that all the time. We mail them in. Okay? So there you have it. This is Arizona. You may see this more in a court near you. But even the courts are being affected by COVID-19 coronavirus this is attorneysteve.com. This is some general legal information for you. This is a snippet of what's going on in our justice system as a response to a global pandemic. Be safe. Be nice. Don't panic. We'll get through this as a nation. We'll get through together, okay? Take care. Have a great day. Bye now.